All right, welcome back, everybody, for a new episode of Chasing Ghosts. Don't let the outfit fool you. Yes, I had this on when I did Hidden Gems yesterday, and yes, I had this on on the Star Wars show on Sunday. Yes, I do change my clothes. I just happen to be recording both of these videos on Sunday ahead of the live show. So now you know why the shirt matches for three days straight. That said, uh, drinking my S-tier Mountain Dew here. Yeah, it probably should have been on the mountain all by itself, but Dr. Pepper and for some reason Verner's were up there. I don't even know what Verner's is, but I digress. We're not here to talk about the tax show, which you can check out tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, where Marco Corbin and I will have some more stuff uh, to go over. I'm not even sure what we're covering yet this week for the tax show, but we will be doing something fun, as we always do. Not to belabor the point, but this week... I do have some interesting books for you for Chasing Ghosts. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Dipping here and there with some oddball things. And hopefully you're still enjoying this series. I mean, this is episode 59 uh, with a couple of uh, Star Wars specials that I didn't number, as I should have numbered. So we're definitely over 60. So we're over a year of doing these videos, giving you some hard to find, some ghosts, uh, just pricing and just some really rare stuff that uh, some stuff I didn't know about going in because some of these were some viewer suggestions and I do have some viewer suggestions today as well. That all said, hopefully you're liking this as well as everything here on the channel. Let me know in the comments. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel, getting closer to that uh, 2k giveaway. Uh, we will have some good stuff to give away uh, for that. And if you want to see what books we want to cover this week to see if they're just hard to find or if they are, in fact, ghosts, hang on for a few seconds after the intro and I will be right back. All right, so starting off this week, we are going to go with a very high ratio incentive. This would be a tough to qualify order, and this is Cable and X Force number one, Mike Diodato cover. Really cool image. I like it. Something about that white background just making him kind of pop, like it's, it's glowing. It's almost illuminated from behind. Really cool image. This is going to be a tough one because this is a one and one one in one fifty. So. Shops had to order 150 copies to get one of these. One in 150 is a tall order and not one we see very often uh, anymore. Oddball number like that. Yes, there are some one in 500, some one in 200, one in 100, but one in 150 is just an odd one. Uh, but this was back in December 2012. Back in those hate the heyday of the variant uh, variant craze, some of these books are very impossible to find these days, a decade later, and can command quite a premium. Uh, granted, this book had a healthy print run. 90,000, but that still makes this incentive only about 600 copies, 602, uh, based on the Comicron numbers of the estimated print run, and they do their quick ratio math. This is all estimated. This is not set in stone. This is the best information I had to work with to kind of give you some of this uh, to make your decisions and your determinations when you're out there uh, uh, hunting and looking for this book, or why it may be hard to find, or if you do find it, why it may be pricey, and you can decide whether you want to pay up that price or not. In the CGC census, there are only 40 copies out of those 600. 28 of them are 9.8s, 6.96s, and then a few singles here, uh, there throughout, with the lowest being a 5.5. Uh, there is a 5.5 out there, so keep that one in mind as well. Uh, no copies have sold recently, which I find kind of surprising. Uh, no copies sold the last three months, but there are two available if you want to go shopping for one, but they are not cheap. 18 watchers keeping an eye on that one for 200 bucks raw. And there are 16 watchers keeping an eye on that other one asking for about $400 raw. Not a cheap book. Not a cheap book at all. But just one to be aware of and one to be mindful of uh, in case you're out there uh, shopping and you come across some weird variant and you go, what is this? Cable and X-Force, who cares? Well, this is why you care. It's pricey. Next up, J. Scott Campbell doing Avenging Spider-Man number one. Spidey and Cap, it's not a sexy girl cover. It's Spidey and Cap, J. Scott Campbell. A lot of times when he does this, like that, uh, those Deadpool covers, a Wolverine, a Hulk book, 
it's not a sexy girl cover. People get go crazy and the prices go up pretty high. Not well. We'll see. We'll see for this one. But this is a one in one hundred for this title. This was from November of two thousand eleven. So again, back in that heyday. But Avenging Spider-Man had a very healthy print run uh, as well, much like the Cable and X Force. Oh, one hundred twelve thousand uh, on this estimated. So that's going to make us have about eleven 1 hundred of this one in one hundred incentive. That's a decent number of one in one hundreds. And this is before the, the store exclusives, where there's a lot of shops getting those. This is still a lot of copies, I would think. In the CGC census for this Campbell cover, there are a lot of copies in the census too. Almost 120 with uh, 28 nine eights, 33 nine sixes, 27 nine fours, a whole bunch of others. I mean, almost 120, almost 120. That's a, that's a large number really. Uh, for what we do here, I'm saying we're normally for the chasing ghosts, we, we, hundreds. Like if you get double digits, that's kind of a lot, but here copy sold June 12th, 22 bids under $40 for this one of 100. So now they're not all that super expensive. You can get these things for cheap sometimes. So this is the kind of thing I like to keep an eye out for. The thing, this is the kind of shopping I like to do that less than half ratio. Uh, you now, now you're piquing my interest. This is when I start to go shopping. Copies available. However, not seeing copies that cheap right now, but who knows? Maybe they come out that way. Uh, raw copies asking 70 bucks, which is still under ratio. Uh, 130 bucks, all right, a little over ratio. And uh, 121 for a 9.4 out of the UK. It's a 9.4, uh, but that's what I found. Uh, some examples of what's a, what are out there for sale. Now, that's the 1 in 100 for this title. There was also a 1 in 50, which is a really cool uh, Joe Casada cover. It's a wraparound you know, cover, really cool image. I like this one as well. But it's a one in fifty, so there's twice as many copies. It's twice as easy to find. So you can imagine the prices on this. Didn't want to cover it and do the whole number thing, numbers game on that because eh, there's just a lot. But while this was the one in uh, fifty, there is also a sketch version of this same image. This one right here, Joe Casada. But this is one in two hundred. So one in two hundred. Now we're talking about something here that we can cover on and look at, look at, in, look into on uh, chasing ghosts. Also, November 2011, 1 in 200, print runs the same. So the incentive at 1 in 200, if the 1 in 100 was over 1,100, now we're talking about 560 copies. So we got half. In the census, we still have a healthy number. There are 330 copies of this in the CGC census. Yes, I double-checked it. I had to make sure because there's a blank cover as well, and I want to make sure I didn't confuse sketch cover and uh, the other sketch cover uh, listed. But this is the one that uh, is the uh, Joe Casada cover, as best that I can tell from everything I can gather. But still, 150, 9 eights, and a whole bunch of others for 330. That's over half of the potential copies are graded. I mean, I guess it's not too crazy. It's a one in 200, so people in shops probably decided, you know, this is a special book. Let me we'll get this slabbed and have been for the last decade or so. But look at this. Look at this. Thirteen fifty at auction. $13.50 and 50 cents at auction granted i believe this is only a nine four but still but still a graded copy of a one and two hundred only thirteen dollars and fifty cents with 13 bids the shipping was more expensive this is what i'm talking about with the auctions if you have to something to sell don't sell and not in demand variant at auction. You're going to end up getting screwed like this because if nobody's looking, you're not going to have people shopping. If you don't have people shopping, you're not going to have bidders because they don't know to bid because they're not looking for the book. And it's just going to be those oddballs like me who see it and go, well, I'm going to put a bid down and four days later forget that, oh, yeah, I threw 20 bucks down on that book. Hey, I won. It happens. So you shop how you want to shop, and I'm just telling you how I shop sometimes. Uh, and that all said, copies of this available for this particular one, even raw copies, look, $13, $40, and the 98 is asking healthy uh, 362 but $13. You can get a one or 200 for $13. Uh, great. I think there might be something wrong. It might be a little damaged, but still something to consider. Uh, stick with Spidey, but we're going to move off of the Avenging Spider-Man title. We're going to go shift on over to the Superior Foes of Spider-Man. And this cover, I really like. I actually just bought one of these. Uh, this is one going to be one of the books coming through on one of my pickups soon because I saw it. It's a Mega Man cover. I wasn't sure if I had it or not. Found it at a price that I liked and just bought it. But this is only, I think, a 1 in 25. So we're not going to talk about this one because this one's not going to be that hard to find. I found it. There's other copies out there in that kind of $25, $30 range. So it's ratio and less. You can find this kind of one out there. I kind of like it because, again, I'm a Mega Man fan, so I thought this was kind of cool. 
but we're not talking about this one. We are going to be talking about the one in 50 for the superior foes of Spider-Man. And there are a few. This is the first one. I think this is Shane Davis on this first issue. First issue came out in uh, July 2013. Like I said, a 1 in 50 incentive variant. Estimated print run, decent, 61,000. So this incentive has a decent 1,200 copies. It's the first issue, after all. So it's going to be the most heavily ordered, and we're going to have the most copies out there. So what's in the census? There are only 19 in the census, 16, 9, 8, and then a couple of others. That's not a lot in the sense. I mean, we just had 330 of that 1 in 200, and there's only 19 of this one. No copies have sold uh, on this one recently in the last uh, three months on eBay. But there are two copies available if you want to go shopping. So you can see it's a 1 in 50. Asking prices are $37, $55, kind of right around that ratio. I say that because that $37 is out of the UK, so it's got $27 shipping. So you're still kind of paying the same price as that other. So they're both about $50, $60 bucks, uh, after shipping and everything. That said, still not too bad. It's 1 in 50. But let's move on, because issue two also had a one of 50. I think this was a, uh, I want to say Jorge Molina. I can't remember all the cover artists. I really should probably add that as a as a, as a, a little feature. If you guys want to know the artists on some of these variants, let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll add it. Granted, it'll add a little extra time in my research, but yeah, I, I could do it, maybe. Uh, but this is August 2013, also a one in 50 for this same run, but the print run was cut in half. So 34,000 estimated print run on issue two. So the incentive is down to only 686. This is more of our uh, wheelhouse. This is more what we're talking about. Under the thousand copies. That's where we're normally looking at some of these potential ghosts. CGC census only has four uh, of this variant in there. Only four copies of issue two. One has sold within the last three months and it sold for only $8.59. Out of the UK, uh, where shipping was eight sixty, so yeah, eight dollars sixty nine cents for one and fifty. Not a bad price. Not a bad price. Uh, great. I was back in May. Uh, but what's available? There are a couple. Uh, we do have a couple of copies available. We have three, and one of them is eight dollars and fifty nine cents. I I don't know if it's got to be the same seller or what, but there's another one for eight dollars fifty nine cents with uh, a few days left on bidding. Granted, it's auction, so. That's where you run the risk of somebody only paying, you know, getting one bidder, somebody getting it for eight sixty. Maybe now after I tell you guys about it, a couple of you are going to go fight for that one. But uh, that said, even if you don't want to fight for it, look, you can get a copy for $13 or $12 or $30. Bucks. One in 50. Not too bad, if you ask me. Maybe I'll consider buying one of those. All of these are out of the UK, too. All three copies I found. I don't know why you guys have all these superior foes of Spider-Man incentive variants, but apparently all the superior foes of Spider-Man incentive variants are overseas in uh in the united kingdom that said let's move on issue three also has another one in 50 uh this one is a mark bagley september 2013 one in 50 print run dips a little bit down to about thirty thousand, so the incentive is only about 601 copies cgc census eight copies there's twice as many as issue two uh six nine eights and a pair of nine fours for this mark bagley uh edition i'm not in love with this cover I think that's Speed Demon on the cover there, too, with him. But uh, look at that. $4.64. $4.64 for a 1 in 50. Uh, granted, out of Canada, so shipping is about 16 bucks, So it ended up being a $20 sale. Still, $4.64 for a 1 in 50 variant is it's almost criminal. Uh, I mean, it's basically cover price almost. I mean, $2.99 cover, but still. These are the prices I love. Uh, and it's, it's, I bought plenty of variants like this, too. But again, one bid. I'm telling you, don't auction, don't auction. Uh, but what do we have available for this one? We still have cheap copies. Even if you didn't auction, look, even buy it now. $6 out of the UK. Again, UK with these Superior Foes of Spider-Man books. Uh, my comic shop has one for $14.50. Uh, it's a one in 50. And then, then someone had, does have a copy up for 100 bucks raw. So uh, I don't know. Good luck to all of you sellers out there if you have this book and you're trying to sell. But uh, I think when uh, buyers are presented with $100 or $6, I'm pretty sure $6 is going to win out unless that book is beat to hell. But we'll see. That's issue three. And we're going to hop over to issue four, which I did just buy this one. This one's also very, very cheap. This one's not an expensive uh, variant. This, I'm just showing it to you because I thought it was cool. And like I said, I bought one. It's a New York Comic Con edition for issue four. It's a My Little Pony uh, kind of crossover book with Spider-Man. Thought it was kind of funny. And this thing is pretty cheap. You can get this thing for like anywhere between five and 20 bucks. I don't know what the print run is. I didn't get that deep into it. It's a New York Comic Con exclusive. 
there were a lot of copies available online. And like I said, the prices they were asking were not that expensive. So if you're interested, go ahead, go ahead, take a look. Like I said, I'm not selling it. It's not a book that I'm selling. I'm not trying to pump it or promote it in any way like that. I'm just saying, hey, look, I bought one for a few bucks. And if you're interested, maybe you can too. But I found this variant while researching the one in 50 for issue four, which is this cover right here. And uh, this is our next one on the list. Uh, so this one against the shocker. 1 in 50. This one is from October of 2013. I forget the cover artist on uh, on this one. Uh, damn, it's right on the tip of my tongue. But uh, 26,000 is the estimated print run on this one. So the incentive is down to about 537 potential copies. Uh, getting tougher as we get deeper into this run. They're still doing 1 in 50s. They're four issues in. Uh, only one in the census. One. And it's a 98, but there's only one in the census for this. And this one had no sales. Uh, the last three months, and then I fully expected to not find any copies for sale, but then I did. And much like the last couple issues, they are not expensive. Nine dollars, thirteen dollars, twenty bucks for a one in fifty. That's only got a potentially five hundred and thirty-seven copies. I don't know. Granted, three of them are from my comic shop, but they're out there. They're out there. Oh, Declan Shavley, Sh Shalvey, if I'm saying it right. That's that's what that could kind of you know recognize the signature but just couldn't process it but that's the that's the cover artist on this one and we've got one more sorry if you guys are tired of the superior foes of spider-man but i got one more one in 50 for you and that's issue five the final variant uh the title keeps going after this this isn't the end of the run this is the end of the variants uh the high ratio incentive variants at least one in 50 november 2013 uh you can see you got the female beetle on the cover with them on this one print run down below twenty four thousand, so the incentive is down below 500 copies uh, going to be tougher. Only five in the census, all nine eights, but only five in the census for this one with no copies sold as you might not, you know, might not be surprised, but unlike the others, there are no cheap copies of this one out there. Matter of fact, there were no copies of this one out there for me to find at this time. I searched and searched and looked and looked to see if maybe I was looking the wrong way, but I could not find this one, uh, out there. So out of the five of them, this is the toughie. All right, so I did enough Spidey, did enough Superior Foes of Spider-Man in particular. Let's shift to something different. Uh, I know I did a bunch of DC uh, when I did the Watchmen one, so we're not going back to DC quite yet, uh, but let's go over to some indie stuff. I love this cover. I, I do. Well, you guys know I'm an Adam Hughes fan. Uh, this Dirty Pair, Run from the Future, uh, issue one. This is just a B cover. This is not an incentive. You can see this sometimes mislabeled as being offered as like a 125 or some sort of ratio. This is not a ratio. This is just... From what I understand, this is just basically the B cover. How many copies there are, I don't know. But it is an homage to another favorite of mine. This Dave Stevens Planet Comics one. I have both of these. I love both of these. I'd recommend if you can afford them, try to get both of these in your collection. In any grade, just have them because it's, it's gorgeous covers, gorgeous work. Just highly recommend having them. Uh, maybe again, I'm just biased. I love Stevens. Uh, I love Adam Hughes. So uh, I just wanted both of them. But this is, again, just the B cover. This is from January of 2000. Uh, so with the estimated print run of the full title of being about 17,000, who knows how many are of this copy? Again, it's not an incentive. Don't, I'm sorry. I didn't delete that. It's just the print run for the B cover. Who knows how many of the B's were ordered out of that 17,000? No idea. There are a decent number in the census with 170 copies, uh, 86, nine, eight, uh, 58, nine, sixes, and then a few others rounding that out. I do have this in a nine, eight. So one of those 86 is mine, which, I'm happy to get because I got it raw and I subbed it myself and just lucked into getting the 9.8. That's it. That's it. Enough of my book. I should have showed it off, but eh, I haven't had time to dig to pull these things out when I'm doing these recordings. But uh, if you'd like for me to show my copies again, I can try to do a little bit of extra digging. Again, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that as well as the artist names added. But this one, unfortunately, there are a lot of copies. This is a popular book, so I didn't really expect this one to be a ghost. I just expected it to be expensive, which it kind of is. And you can see raw copies at, are getting 140 with 21 bids, 180 with 29 bids, 170 with 16 bids, and that's a 9.6, again, out of the UK. Uh, and then many more, many more copies uh, sold for this one. And if you wanted to buy one, well, same kind of story. There are options for you out there. Raw copies are looking at anywhere from 225 to 250 asking prices, and then 9.8s asking 600 bucks. And again, there's more copies out there uh, to be had than just these three. Uh, there are a few more. So 
not a ghost, but I just kind of wanted to look into it. Just wanted to touch it and, you know, you know, touch into that point with the Adam Hughes cover. Cause I know other people like me until I found a copy, this was one I was hunting for a while. Cause it's not something you see at every LCS. This is something you got to kind of go online or hit up a show or uh, do a little extra legwork to go and get one and shell out a few extra bucks uh, as well in this particular case. Not all cases, as you saw from some of those Spidey books, they're not always expensive with that extra legwork. Sometimes it's just extra legwork uh, to get a cheap book. But that said, uh, the next book is one I did not know about. This one was uh, recommended to me and introduced to me by a viewer. So through IG, thanks to uh, Chingdari, I don't Chingadaria, if I'm saying it right. If not, let me know phonetically uh, when our IG chat, how I should have fixed that. But thanks for shooting this one over to me in our uh, IG chat. Again, hit me up on Instagram. Hit me, Send me a direct message. I'll chat with you. Give me suggestions. I, you can see I take suggestions. I'll put them in here. I had no idea what this book was uh, when I saw the copy. And then I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then I had to look into it to see what it was. This is a web store exclusive from November 2006. G oh, I'm sorry. This is G.I. Joe Dreadnoughts declassified number one this was a three issue uh mini series basically featuring the dreadnoughts the cover a is i believe had a connecting cover and then i think there's a b cover as well for all three issues but this issue one had a web store exclusive that you would have gotten uh through um uh, is this devil's do i think it was devil's devil's do was still publishing at this time um uh, but estimated print run on this one who knows i mean cover a uh of this particular book was in the uh Comicron is showing us about 11,000 copies, but who knows how many of the web store exclusive. So like I said, I had no idea this thing even existed, let alone to go to the web store in you know, particular to go buy this one. Uh, there are no copies of this one in the census. You, you can look this one up. This one, there's no copies in the CGC census for this book. There are also no copies showing as sold uh, on uh, eBay's of the last three months. Uh, I believe the copy that was found by Ching Chingadaria was uh, you know found out in the wild and said, what is this? I don't know what this is. I'm buying it and send it to me to see what it was. And here we are. Who knows? A lot of people don't know what this is. And uh, as you might guess, they're an unlisted for sale either right now. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, but I've not found any copies listed for sale for this particular book. So keep your eye out for this one. This could be a tough one to find. Uh, again, web store exclusive GI Joe book. I love GI Joe and there are some tough ones out there. And this looks like another one to add to that, uh, that ghost list uh, of GI Joe books to go uh, for you, Joe collectors to go and hunt. Uh, good luck. If you can, if you guys have one, you know more about this, uh, you got an inside track or anything like that. Shoot me a message on Instagram. I'd love to hear it. And uh, yeah. Uh, another book I've also got through an Instagram recommendation is this Disney's heroes, Disney's hero squad, ultra heroes. Number one. Yes. It's an action comics homage. But goofy. There's a superhero. Really cool. This is a variant. This is a one in 10. Thanks to phone autograph. So I'm saying the name, right? See, it's all, it's easy to read these handles and it is to try to phonetically say them sometimes, but phone autograph. Thank you. Sent this to me again, IG, our conversation on IG, our direct message conversation, shot this one over to me. And, uh, I'd forgotten about it for a little bit, but then I was like, you know what? This will be good for this week. So I decided to throw this one in last minute. Uh, one in 10, one in 10. How many places are ordering 10 copies of these weird boom Disney books? Disney Hero Squad, number one, Ultra Heroes from February 2010. I'm guessing not a lot because the overall print run of this book was only about 4,500. So one in 10, you're only going to have potentially 455 copies of this variant out there. Uh, also, I know the image quality here isn't the best, but there is some interesting little details on this. It looks like there's a, a coffee ring stain on the cover. They made it look aged. But the uh, it's just not a lot of cop. There's not a lot of pictures of this book out there to go. Go ahead. You hit the Internet. There's not a lot of this book out there because it's just one of those weird little forgotten about things. But there are two in the census, two, two, nine, eights. And uh, with that, there were also two, nine, eight sales. In the last few months, this book one didn't sell for cheap either. Uh, June 11th, best offer on eighteen hundred dollars. They accepted thirteen hundred bucks. And then back in April. Uh, CBCS 98, uh, $2,200 asking price. They accepted $1,500 at best offer. So well over a grand for both 98 sales, one CBCS, one CGC in the last few months. So very, very expensive sales for this book. Again, before phone autograph had sent this to me, I didn't know about this one. 
So now I know about it. I'm looking for it, but good luck to the rest of you as well. Listed for sale. There are none at the moment. Uh, so those were the sales of copies that moved, but right now, none out there. If you want to go and find one, uh, good luck. Good luck. And with that, this Disney's Hero Ultra Heroes, you know, series didn't run. I think it ran like eight issues total, but uh, they only had variants for issue one and issue two. So here is the issue two, one and ten. Granted, it's not an homage like the other, which is kind of it loses a little bit of luster because it doesn't have that homage vibe of the action comics. You kind of like that, uh, but still a one in ten. And this one was February of uh, 2010. God knows how many copies of this thing were out there. Uh, did not hit the Comicron numbers, which only gives you like the top 300 or so. I think this particular month, there was like 307 comics listed and the lowest estimated print run of comics for that month was 3,700 thereabout. So we can only say that this was under that number that it didn't make the top 300. So less than 3,700 copies. So what does the one in 10 incentive end up being? Well, who knows? We know it's going to be less than 370 copies then. Right. If we do that basic math, that's what it's got to be. Uh, there are no copies, no copies available. Uh, no copies in the census, I should say. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. No copies in the CGC census. There have been no copies sold within the last three months for this particular book. And sorry, I spoiled it already. Yes, there are no copies available of this particular book. Yet I did buy one of these this week. I found this at uh, an online store for 20 bucks or something like that. So I decided to throw it in my cart with a bunch of the Sonic, the Hedgehog books that I was like, oh, they got some Sonic books here too. And I bought a few things online. There's still stuff out there. Go out there looking, go out there shopping, hunting, hit those online stores. There are still books to be had out there as well. Don't just rely just on eBay to do your comic shopping. Go uh, do those searches and go check out those usual suspect places. Sometimes you can get lucky. Especially if you're looking for a book that not everybody's looking for, like this weirdo book. But I did find one, like I said, for 20 bucks. Who knows what it's worth? Like I said, I don't know how many it's worth. I don't even know how many were printed. All I know is it looks like it's pretty tough to find. It's kind of cool. And for 20 bucks, I'll throw 20 down on something like that. It's kind of fun. I'll just tuck it away in a box and see what happens. Maybe I'll get it graded if it looks nice enough. That all said, that's what I got for you this week. Hopefully you found that uh, a weird little concoction of books interesting. Uh, I know it ran through a little bit less than normal. I didn't hit 15. I think we're more in like that 12 uh, dozen type books type of range. But uh, with that, most of these are only hard to find because there were multiple copies. There were at least two or three, four copies or more. Uh, so all of these books here are all going to be hard to find is my qualification for this week. But there were a few there were none out there, including one of those Spideys and that G.I. Joe book and both Disney 1 and 10s. Yeah, these ones, I feel comfortable calling these, at least the last three in particular. But also we'll add the Spidey book as well. All of these we'll call Ghosts these this week because there were no copies available for any of them. Uh, if you agree, disagree, let me know what you think in the comment section. That's my call for the week. Thanks for stopping by and checking this out. Again, if you have any of these books, Take a picture. If you've already taken a picture and posted it, tag me now. Tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see uh, what these tough to find books you guys have. What tough to find books you find based off of some of these. I get sent getting tagged in the messages lately, and it, it makes me smile when I see, "Hey, I saw your video. I found this book for cover." Uh, and then some of these tough, hard to find, low print type books people are adding to their collections for cheap because now they, they they know they exist and they find them at their shops. I love seeing that. That's the whole point of why I'm doing this. Uh, I can't buy all these books myself, so I'm trying to help you guys out too and just share some interesting comics and uh, hopefully at prices we can all afford and uh, just have some fun. Let's just have fun and uh, keep collecting this stuff. Again, uh, hit me up on Instagram with any suggestions, anything that you've picked up. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys soon with some more content. Make sure you check out the tax show tomorrow, Star Wars show on Sunday, and we'll have Dollar Bin Digging and Hidden Gems mixed in there as well as some of the other shows that the fellows are doing for the channel like between two forces and back issues and maybe we'll even add some more as uh as folks like to create content because again i don't mind uh other people creating some stuff here on renovision as well um help anybody along into trying out this uh, whole youtube space because i don't know i'm still having fun doing it hopefully you guys are having fun going along this ride with us and with that i will see you guys later